You know that Saturday night when you're browsing eBay for gamma spectrometers and you find something... Oh, this looks cool. It's a mobile gamma spectrometer with a scintillator and a photodiet, which looks really tiny. Gamma scintillator is a device that can measure energy of one type of ionizing radiation called gamma rays. They are the high energy version of light. Here the photons are represented by this squiggly line pointed towards the scintillator, which is the sink inside the red square on the picture. And when they reach the scintillator, they deposit their energy. The energy gets converted to visible light, which travels to the photomultiplier. Visible light is also made from photons, but with lower energies. The amount of visible light the photons create is proportional to the energy of the incoming gamma ray. The greater the energy of the photon, or the incoming gamma ray, the bigger the visible light flash they create. Photomultiplier is a sensitive detector for light, which uses a group of electrodes with increasing voltages to convert the photons to electrical pulses. The electrical pulses are measured and analyzed by a computer and dedicated electronics. The result is an energy spectrum of gamma radiation, which tells us what is the distribution of energy of incoming photons in. Back to our eBay scintillator. It looks compact, it looks robust, but can it measure gamma ray energies? Here it is sitting on a slightly radioactive piece of equipment and recording data. Right now the photons are being converted to visible light inside this tiny scintillator and this light is measured. The good news is that the spectrometer responds to radiation, but the resulting spectrum looks like noise. This means that the resolution of the spectrometer is not high enough to distinguish the gamma rays coming from various radioactive isotopes. Instead of multiple peaks, which corresponds to different energies, we can only see one huge peak, which is the result of noise. The most likely reason for the poor performance is the small size and low density of the scintillator. Let us return to the picture and remember that the scintillator produces pulses with sizes that correspond to the incoming photon energy. But this is only true if all the energy from the photon is deposited in the scintillation crystal. If part of the energy can escape the crystal because the photon didn't scatter enough or the crystal just wasn't big or dense enough to stop it, that means that part of the information was lost. You can imagine that if you're trying to measure something with a measuring tape and your measuring tape is too short to measure these things, but you only have one chance, then you can't really know how big the object is. You will always measure more or less the same distance if the, this object is big enough. The amount of energy deposited mostly depends on the size and density of the crystal. Both are low because we can see the detector is small and the detector is made of plastic which has a very low density. The better scintillators are made of crystals like uh, sodium iodide or cesium iodide or maybe something even denser. The seller's website has a picture of an americium spectrum which makes sense since americium 241 has a few energy peaks below 100 kilo electron volts. I thought that if I try the same thing I might finally be able to measure something because the lower energy photons coming from americium 241 are most likely to deposit their entire energy in the small crystal and resolve in the spectrum. The radiation protection department allowed me to conduct a measurement of americium 241 in their laboratory and at first it was looking like a spectrum was forming. But after a while it became clear that it was just noise. I had to resort to even lower energy. The last step was to use an X-ray machine at the faculty where I could produce photons with energies around 30 kilo electron volts. Unsurprisingly, the results were not any better. The conclusion is that while the detector works as a crude dosimeter, since it responds to the radiation, it does not work as a gamma spectrometer. There is still a chance that with different settings it would be possible to measure something and I plan to investigate this further, but when it comes to gamma scintillators, you just need them big. 
I'm planning on making more videos about scintillators and radiation and nuclear reactors. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe or don't. I don't care. Bye. Oh, and special thanks to everybody who helped make this happen. Bye.